Ah, uh, that's better. Hope that's okay for you guys, because otherwise it's really random. Okay, okay uh, let's get started. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to CS 107. Let's get started here. We're at the end of we are at the end of week three, which is very exciting and very scary at the same time. Uh, but but it is what it is. We are we are moving. We are steadily moving forward. A couple of reminders that are uh, kind of the usual things. We've got assignment one came in throughout the course of this past week, and the TAs are all hard at work grading those. Our goal is to get feedback to you over the weekend so that you will have it in time to uh, respond for future assignments, starting as early as assignment two, hopefully. We've got assignment two coming in, uh, due on, on Monday, with the usual kind of hard deadline policy as, as assignment one. And then the same kind of everything else is kind of the, the usual. Uh, today is the ad drop deadline, so something to be aware of. Maybe you know check your check your schedule, make sure you're enrolled uh, for the right number of units and all that, and so that uh, there are no surprises at 501 um, because the registrar is as unsympathetic as our submit script, as I understand it. Okay, so let's get into it. Today, we're going to continue our discussion of void stars. Last time we saw, we, were, we introduced the void star and talked about how to use it from the client's perspective. And then in lab, we saw a little bit more of an example of how to use void stars and comparison functions to sort and search through arrays. Today, we're going to focus primarily on the implementation side. From, we're going to talk about how to actually write a function that operates on void star and how we can you know how we can implement an algorithm like a q sort or a v search we won't be implementing those because there are already library functions for that so we sure don't need to write our own but uh, we'll see a couple examples of that as part of that discussion we'll be looking at some of the limitations of void star we talked about a couple of them already we talked a little bit about them already um, but we will both review that and also see a few more things. But specifically, we'll see how to work around these limitations. What does it mean that we cannot do pointer arithmetic on a void star? Well, gosh, what do I do instead? And then last, I want to make sure we spend a fair amount of time looking at a few examples of some errors that can come up when working with void stars. These are called level of indirection errors. And uh, these are super important, for both uh, for pretty much the rest of the class. They're going to be important for. We're going to. We'll see these errors come up all over the place in you know assignments and labs, and uh, pretty much guarantee there's going to be an exam question on it. Um, looking at how uh, what what can go wrong with Void Star and how to identify these errors, how to fix these errors, and how to make sure they don't happen to you. All right. <clears throat> so let's get into it. I've got two main code examples, and I'll be driving the lecture primarily from the perspective of trying to implement these two code examples. Um, and there will be occasions where I'll need to switch back to the slides to explain some, some concept, but the, our primary goal should be focused on getting these examples to work. So let me switch over to my terminal, usual setup, and let me pull up the callback.c file, which uh, is So our goal is to, our first goal is going to be that we want, we have this function called find max. And let me start by telling you what it does. Find max at the moment takes an array of integers uh, and the number of elements. And it will go through the array and figure out which element has the maximum value. And it will return that element. So the logic here is kind of your, your standard for loop over an array. We start by assuming, we're going to assume that the array has at least one element in it. And we'll start by setting our maximum value to the first element of the array. Then we'll check every other element to see whether or not that element is greater than the max that we've seen so far. If it is, then we'll update our max 
And then by the end, we can return, we can return the value we got. Okay? So our goal is that we would like this function works. It does work on an array of integers. I can show you that really quickly if you want some form of verification. Uh, I can call callback. We can see that in our array of numbers, it tells us that the max is 99. And so I did call find max here. Um, I'll show you the call later. That's not our focus right now. So the code works for now on an array of integers, but it feels really limiting to only operate on an array of integers. It'd be much better if we could um, operate on a on any kind of array, right? This algorithm feels like it's one of those things that I might want to be able to do on an array of strings. For example, I might want to find the alphabetically last string or an array of doubles or, or some such um, some other kind of array. So we'd like to be able to convert this function to work on an arbitrary type of array. And as part of doing that, uh, I've listed four questions that we're going to need to answer. And every time we answer a question, we will be able to make a change to the code here. Um, and by the time we've answered all four of these questions, we'll ha hopefully have arrived at the generic implementation of find max. All right. So let's start. Let's just start with question number one. Here's a bit of a warm up question. What type should the parameter ARR be? Right now, it is an int star, meaning it's pointing to one or more integers. But now we don't know what type of array we are looking at. So we can't use a typed pointer. We can't use int star or care star or care double star or anything like that. The only option we have is void star. Meaning ARR is a pointer to some thing or more than one thing, and I do not know what type it is pointing to. OK? So far, so good. So the answer to question number one, ARR should be a void star. All right. Next question. Number two, what should this function return now? Before, with the int case, we had find max returning the actual value. We had it returning the number 99 in the case of the big array of integers. We had it, we initialized the max value to the first or the zeroth element of the array, and then we keep setting max to array bracket i. We can't do that anymore because we can't declare a variable that represents a whole a, a, a thing of arbitrary type to return that value. So what do we do? Well, we talked about this a little on Monday, and you almost certainly saw it in lab when doing the, uh, the strings example, that when we have generic functions, they're not going to hand back the elements themselves, and they're not going to pass in the elements themselves. They're going to return, in this case, a pointer to the element in the array. So what we need to do is we need this function, find max, to return a pointer to and that's very important. You know, put underscore around it. A pointer to the maximum element. Yeah. So how does that look? Well, instead of returning an integer, or instead of returning a thing, I want to return a pointer to a thing. So I'll return a void star. And instead of declaring int max. I'll have void star max. And now I need max to point to the zeroth element of array. Well, since arrays and pointers are the same thing, ARR, when we say it points to the array, we are actually saying that ARR points to the beginning of the array. It points to the zeroth element. So if I just assign void star max equals ARR, now uh, this points to 0th LM of ARR. So yep. just to clear a question, 
for a minute. The array doesn't hold, the array still holds like these mysterious objects. Yes. We don't know how big they are. Yes. But you just called it a void star. Like, yes. You just called it a void. Yes, so to clarify, that's a, that's a good question. To clarify, we're not saying that the array has pointers in it. We're saying that the array has stuff in it. So we want to be able to call find max on an array of ints. We want to be able to call it on an array of characters. And we're, but we're going to use the type void star to mean I don't know what type of array I'm, I'm looking at. And so the only type I can use is void star. Other questions? Okay. So we got through one and two. We now have, you know, so I haven't updated the for loop yet um, to be consistent with that. Though that's part of the next two questions. But um, I guess actually, uh, uh, yeah, that's part of the next two questions. So, um, but I've changed the prototype, and I've updated my max variable. Yeah. So here's the. Most involved question of them all, which is how exactly do we get to the ith element of ARR? Here you see that I'm using ARR bracket i from the int world. Is that going to work? And if not, what do we have to do instead? So for that, I'm actually going to go to the slides. Uh, let's see that one. And I'm going to, for one more time, review pointer arithmetic. We saw this example uh, pretty much on Monday, but I, I made a couple changes to the diagram uh, for extra clarity and so that I can explain this piece a little differently. So here we've got, we've declared two pointers, uh, int star IP and double star DP. And I've allocated the memory for the array of integers here and for an array of doubles here. So I've written it out horizontally, but it's the same idea. We're starting from here and we're going you know, to the end. And so I've drawn in these, dark, these solid black lines to indicate where the elements are separated. But I've also drawn in, and I hope that's coming out OK, I've also drawn in some of these kind of lighter gray lines which indicate, and what this is saying is, recall that we talked about size of int being four and size of double being eight. The units for that were bytes. So an int is four bytes of memory. So what I'm depicting here is that each of these little boxes represents one byte. So between each of these solid line separators, we have four little boxes, four bytes for this int and four bytes for this int, and for this one, and for this one. We have eight bytes for this double, and eight for this other double. Okay? And we talked about pointer arithmetic already. We said that when we, when we take IP plus one, we are, point, we are skipping to the next solid box. We're skipping to the next int in this array, which means that we have moved forward four bytes. And likewise, for an array of doubles, we move forward eight bytes to the next black bordered box. So what about void star? We said that here is how we can think about a void star. We've got the same amount of memory allocated to our void star VP. However, we don't know where those black borders are anymore. We don't know where these solid line separations are between the elements of the array, assuming that there is an array in here, right? So we don't know, when I say VP plus one, we don't know how far to go in, because we're looking for the next black bordered box, and there isn't one, right? We talked about a bit of a solution already, which is that we could have an LM size. So in addition to passing you the void star and saying, here's a pointer to um, an array of things, I can tell you, by the way, each of those elements in, your, in my array happens to be two bytes wide. And so here I've drawn that in 
with dashed lines. So each, every two bytes is separated with a dashed line. Why is it a dashed line and not a solid line? Because only we know that, we only know that through a lem size. The compiler doesn't know that. We can't use these dashed lines to do the pointer arithmetic. Because when we say, if I just look at VP without looking at a lem size, I don't know where the dashed line separators are. You can think of them as kind of being in our head. Like, we know that here's where the next element starts but the computer doesn't because it doesn't have the, the solid lines filled in. Yeah? So we don't have these like black border lines and we don't have, and we can't use the dashed lines, but hey, I mean, we do have these little gray lines. So maybe we could use that instead. So this is a limitation of void star that we cannot do point arithmetic. Now we want to talk about what is the workaround? How do we, how do we do arithmetic? Because we really do want a pointer that points to this element and a pointer that points to this element. Well, let me show you one other type of pointer. Here's a care star. And we talked a little bit about care star, the size of a care star, or I'm sorry, the size of a character Oh, I forgot to update the number. Okay, sorry, this should be 2300. Um, knew I was gonna make a bug on a slide one day. Um, that was, yeah, okay. So the, we talked about the size of a character being one byte. So I've, so I've got this array, it's the same size. I've got this memory, it's the same size as the other ones. But now the gray lines and the solid black lines totally overlap with each other because every Little box, every byte is a separate character. Does that make sense? And then we realize, hey, these lines happen to overlap exactly with the gray lines down here. So maybe we can take advantage of that. And so here's how we would actually do that. Imagine if we treated VP not as a void star, where we couldn't do point arithmetic, but we treat it as a care star. We say, just for now, imagine that VP is pointing to characters. <coughs> Keeping in mind that VP is not actually pointing to characters. But imagine if it were. I also have a typo on that number. <sighs> okay. Then if I take VP and I add two, then I skip two characters forward, which means I am sure enough now pointing here. That number should be 2202. Okay? So by treating the void star as a care star for the purposes of doing point arithmetic, I was able to move along these sort of gray lined um, sections and I can get to the next element. Notice that to get to the next element of this array, I needed to add not one, like I did with the int star or with the double star. I needed to add two, which happens to be the LM size. Questions about this? Question? Yep. Yes, I'm sorry, I, I can't change these slides now, but this should be 2202, and this should say 2300. And I will make sure that is updated when I post these this afternoon. Apologies for that. But the picture is correct. Anything else? So now we can answer question number three. How do we get to the ith element of the array? Well, I'll write the code first and then I'll answer the question at the top. I can declare a pointer to point to the ith element of the array. That way I can sort of split out this line of pointer math, which is gonna look a little scary. And I could say, all right, well, I wanna do arithmetic on ARR. I wanna do ARR plus something. I can't do arithmetic on a void star, so I have to cast ARR as a care star. And it's important that I use care star here because care star um, because characters are one byte wide. 
because in the diagram, the solid black lines for the for CP matched exactly with the gray lines down here. So it's important that I use care star, not any other type. And now I so I cast ARR to a care star. And then I add. Well, how do I get to the ith element of an array? Well, I guess I need an lm size parameter, don't I? So let's go ahead and add that in. How do I get to the ith element of an array where each element takes up a lem size bytes? Well, if a lem size were, say, 4, and I wanted to get to, say, the bracket 3 element, then I would need to move 3 times 4 bytes. So I move i times lem size. So this is our point of arithmetic. So we will do we so the answer to number three, we cast ARR as care star add i times a length size. Bytes. Uh, yep. Question? Yep. Do you not have to cast it back to a void star at the end? Ah, so the question is, do we have to cast it back to a void star at the end? The answer is no, because void star is compatible with any type. So here you're right that the right hand side looks kind of like a care star, but then we're going to take it, we're going to assign it into this void star, and the compiler says, well, okay, void star can point to anything, so I'll take it. And by the way, it is important that we did declare ith as a void star here. We wouldn't want to declare ith as a care star because it's not pointing to characters. We're using care star solely for the purpose of the pointer arithmetic. So we want both ARR and ith to be void stars. That is the correct type. They are pointers to some generic thing. <coughs> but just for this line, gotta treat it like a care star. Question? Yep. Oh, okay, here and then back. Yes, yeah, so this means a client will always have to provide a lem size, right? That is correct. So when we, yeah. So that the client will always have to know what type of things are in their array. There's no way to do this without knowing. That's correct. So the question is, does the client always have to know a lem size? Absolutely. When I call find max as the client, I need to know. I would like to find the max of an array of integers or the max of an array of strings. I mean, otherwise, what was I expecting to get out of the array anyway, right? Um, that I, you know, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't even know how to read elements out of the array myself if I didn't. So yes, um, it's got to be. All, the array has to contain all elements of the same type, and the client needs to know what type that is, and therefore tell us how big they are. Great. What else? Um, for for, for the parameter uh, <laughs> lem size, we're assuming that the, it's given in bytes and not bits. Uh, so yeah, we're talking about everything in terms of bytes right now. Um, so the question is, is it bytes or bits or like what exactly is the unit? Um, yeah, so the, the gray boxes that I've drawn in uh, are, are in our separators of bytes. Um, but this happens to line up with cares being one byte wide so that the pointer arithmetic just kind of works. Um, yeah, so that is going to be the conventional. It also happens to line up with malloc. You know, malloc takes uh, a number of bytes when we call malloc and pass it a number. It lines up with size of. So yes, a lem size um, works that, the same way as size of, works the same way as those things. Does that make sense? What else? I think there was something else. Like that. So um, I have a question. Sure. So like where LM size is of type size t, yep. okay. but then like we multiply by the counter i, which is an integer. Yep. Like how does all of that type conversion and stuff work? Yeah. So the question is about the size t versus the int. Uh, this isn't really a big deal. There's not a lot of conversion that needs to happen. Size t is just a, is basically an a, an int. It's like a number that will never be negative because sizes don't aren't negative. Um, an int, this int we know actually also won't be negative. Where is it? Um, because we start at one and we go up. We could have made this a size t, but it's pretty conventional to use int. So it's okay. Like the multiplication is going to work out, and you know nothing crazy is going to happen because both numbers are positive. So it'll be fine. Um, I suppose it would be a disaster if i were negative, or maybe it won't. I don't you know. But we'll we'll talk about. Well, we're talking about the different conversions between integer types later. But you can kind of. If you really have to think about size t as just basically an integer type, you'll be fine. Um, and there's nothing else really deep going on there. Um, yeah. Um, and then sure. Would, would it also work if we cast 
did ARR as an instar and added one half instead of two. Great, great. So the question is, would it, would it also work if I cast ARR as an instar and then I add I times a lem size? Well, in this case, you know, in the slide we were saying a lem size was two, right? But in this case, we don't know what a lem size is. So you could say, well, what if we cast to an int star and then add i times a lem size divided by size of int, right? We did the division. And that would work as long as a lem size was divisible by size of int. But what if a lem size, so imagine if a lem size were two, just like in the slide, and imagine if we used int star. So you say you want to add one half of the size of an int. But so how do I get here? Right? So I want to add ARR plus a half. Can't add a fraction. Right? So, so in that case, you know, you're on the right, you're, you're, you're thinking around along the right lines that, yes, we could have cast this to a different type and then done a slightly modified pointer arithmetic to get there. But this is the most general way we can do that. No matter what type a lem size is, I can cast ARR to care star. I know that characters are one byte and it is safe for me to add this amount and I'll get to a whole address with no rounding and fractions or any of that. So that's why we cast a care star. Anything else? Okay. So we're almost there. We've got, we've updated almost all of our, uh, of our code. There's this one line left. I'll make this one change as part of getting to the ith element, which is that when I update the max, I want the max to now point to, hello, I'd like to be able to type. Uh, I now want the max to point to the ith element, assuming that this condition is true. Um, I, so max equals is now pointing to the ith element. The problem is, what do we do about this condition? Right, so that is our question number four. How do we compare um, the element, the elements inside ARR to you know, the max that we're looking at? We can't use greater than sign, less than sign, because we don't know what's in the array. Um, what if we were sorting an array of strings and we wanted to sort them alphabetically? Then maybe we would want to use something like stir comp. Um, what if we were sorting uh, you know, an array of doubles? Then maybe the less than and greater than will work differently for doubles than for ints. So just like with something like qsort or lfind that you saw in lab, we need to accept a client callback function. Uh, pass client supplied callback function. So the client will, knows, because the client knows what is in the array, it knows, the client will know what the element, what types the elements are, how big they are. The client would then also know how to compare those elements, presumably, or how they want our elements to be sorted. So we can ask the client, okay, when you call find max, please also tell me, please also give me a function that I can use to compare elements. And I'll write out the prototype for the function. Uh, you'll see this defined kind of nicely in cvector.h. So don't worry about exactly, um, you know, getting this syntax down. Like, oh my gosh, are you going to be required to memorize the syntax? No, no. It's just something that, you know, this is just kind of the syntactic way of things. What we're going to do, just like with qsort and lfind, is we're going to accept a pointer to a function. This function takes two void stars. I'm declaring them const void star to be consistent with the comparison functions you've written so far. It's a pointer. It takes two pointers to elements and returns positive, negative, or zero according to which one's bigger. And that is the syntax for accepting that callback function. So now, how do we call it? So instead of saying, is ARR bracket i greater than max, that's not, that's not what we want anymore. We want to ask this callback function. So we can just call the function just like any other function. We just say comp fun, which is, happens to be the name of this thing, this parameter. And we pass it, say, the ith element and the max that we've seen so far. And what do we want this to return? Well, if the ith element is greater then the max we've seen so far, then we want to update max. So if the first argument is bigger than the second argument, 
Our comparison function will return a positive number. So, we call comp fun, and if it returns a positive number, that means ith is greater than max, therefore we update max equal to ith. Questions? Question? Yep. Uh, if we want to read the third element from the ARR, yep. so i will be 3, yes. so we will add 3 into 2, which is 6, to the base address. Yep. So will it read all the six bytes? Ah, so the question is, so if, imagine if we were reading, we wanted to read the third element of ARR. So maybe I'll switch to this quick diagram here. Um, so imagine if we wanted to read one, two, wait, so sorry, this is zero, this is one, this is two, and then like we're going to start reading from here. Um, so then we'll get a point, so we'll add three times two, assuming LM size is two, so we'll add six, and we'll be pointing, we'll be pointing here. All ith is, is it's a pointer to this location. Okay, and all we're doing is pointing here. We haven't read anything yet. The function that's going to do the reading is the comparison function. When we call comp fun and we pass it a pointer to this location, we say do the comparison. And now it's up to the client, you know, the person who's calling find max, to know how many bytes to read. Presumably, if the client had this array and knew that the LM size was two, then the client would know that their comparison function needed to read these two bytes and only these two bytes. So that is the job of the client. It is not our responsibility to worry about that. But that is a great question because that is something we will have to see. That how does the comparison function, you know, stay consistent with that? Yeah. Great. Anything else? Question. Yep. Why do we have to uh, pass the uh, the pointer of the function instead of pass the function to the uh, So the question is why do we have to pass a pointer to the function? That's just a sort of a, a language thing. We can't pass a function itself because, um, you know, the function is just this big block of code. Um, and so we can't pass a big block of code. Um, and so our solution in C is just, hey, I can pass you a pointer to this thing and you can go call the function. So just kind of a semantic, just kind of a syntactic thing. There was another question? Oh, okay. Cool. Anything else? So yes, function pointer, just syntax. But notice we don't need to do anything special when we call it. It, the, you know, C just knows that it's going to work out. Okay. Anything else? Why is the star in the pointer on the left side and the right side? Why is the star? Uh, maybe, but I mean, if you think about like pointer to int, it was int star. Um, so here this is, so the reason we need this parentheses is that we're saying, yeah, so the way we're reading this is comp fun is a pointer to, and then we read the pieces around it, a function that takes two void stars and returns an int. That's just kind of, that's just how we read it. A pointer to, and then we, we, we work out. All right. Great. So we have implemented find max. And now we can look at calling find max. Uh, I guess I, yeah, I will need to update the call before I can test it because um, I just made a bunch of changes. I changed the prototype a lot. So here, let me move down to our first test case where I've got an array of integers. You saw this array being printed out before. And I would like to, so I print out the array of numbers, and I would like to find the max of those numbers. So before we just called find max of nums comma count, and it returned the actual int max. But here now we have to update this call to work with a generic version. Recall the prototype, maybe I should have scrolled past it, Let's just recall the prototype and remind ourselves what we need to do. So we've got the array and we've got the count like before, or the number of elements like before. We also need to pass it the LM, this new function, the LM size, the size of each element, and then a pointer to a comparison function that find max can use. So let's do that. We'll say int max, let me keep the compare function on the screen. So we'll say int max equals find max, well, you know, or we'll call find max. We'll need to add the LM size pointer, 
which is the size of, we can take the zeroth element of the array as a good indication for size of. We could use size of int here. These two mean the same thing. <coughs> since nums of zero is an int. And then we can pass it a comparison function. We'll pass it comp int. And you can see comp int up here. You've seen this function already in the in lab. It's essentially it's given two pointers to uh, elements and compares them as if they were you know, pointers to integers. So we dereference and then do the last line. I'll get back to the compare function. Yeah. Now there was one other thing that we kind of did as part of sort of question number two. We said what should find max return, and we concluded that instead of returning the actual maximum element because we couldn't do that because generic functions can't operate on elements themselves, we have to return a pointer to the element. So rather than returning an actual integer, find max is going to return an int star. If I want the integer out of this int star, then I need to dereference it. And I need to cast the return value to an int star here, because if I didn't cast it, then I wouldn't be able to dereference um, the return value. The return value is a type of void star. So here we're telling the compiler, OK, find max returned me a pointer. This is a pointer to an element. I happen to know that my elements are of type int star. Therefore, I know that find max returns an int star. Effectively an int star. So I will treat it like an int star so that I can dereference it to get the integer back out. All right, I'll run it real quick to hopefully see if I did anything wrong. Oh my gosh, it compiled. <laughs> and oh my gosh, it worked. Oh my god. <laughs> Live coding is always a little bit of a. Anyway, so. Questions about this change? So this is the client side again, but we should definitely make sure we understand it. We added the two parameters, and probably the most important part for today is we cast this, uh, the return value um, as int star and dereference to it. Question. Yep. So generally, if we have a pointer to a function in our namespace, or whatever program we are writing, uh -huh. and we use that pointer name anywhere, yep. it's going to like find it. Ah, uh, so you're saying like comp int? Exactly. Um, so, so your your question is if if I have like the name if I have a function declared somewhere and I name it, then the compiler will find it. Um, the same, it's sort of it, the same rules apply as for function calls, like as for printf, for example. So comp int needs to be declared above here, or else I'll get an implicit declaration warning, or I'll get actually something worse. Um, because it won't be able to find the variable and it will be confused. Um, is that, so, so actually, sorry. Normally with a, with a function call, we'd get a warning. Um, if I used comp int, but I put comp int this function below test ints, then I'll get an error. Um, but generally speaking, if you put your comparison function above where you use it, you'll be fine. Question? Yep. So there's not one call that you could make that would compare strings and ints and all other types, right? Like you're going to have to write the different comparison functions, <laughs> or is there a way to do that? Yeah, so the question is, is it, is, it, is it ever possible to have one single call to find max that will just work on ints and strings and anything else? And the answer is no. We, you are absolutely right. We need to write each comparison function. We need to pass the appropriate sizes, and we need to make sure we cast the return value to the right type. All three of those things need to change for each call to find max, depending on the type. Question? Yep. Um, how much here that we're passing in is an int, but I think it the size oh. of <coughs> Yeah, so here, so the question is, count here is an int, whereas the, the parameter type is of size t. Uh, the conversion is fine. Um, you, can, you can pass an int as a size t, and the compiler is OK with that. And it says, OK, sure, whatever. You just want me to make sure that the int isn't negative, and if it is, then I get to do whatever I want. And sure enough, the int isn't negative. So, so that's, that's OK. You could declare this variable as a type size t if you wanted. Uh, it's pretty standard to use ints for like counts like this, so that's why we used it. But it's not a big deal. Um, yeah, it'll it'll just kind of it'll go with it. Sure. Uh, don't know who's first. Somebody goes. In the function header for find max, uh -huh. uh, the callback function is of type pointer to function, right? That's correct. 
Um, but then your function here for comp int is yeah. just. I just named the function. <coughs> yeah. So the question is, like, for example, why don't I need an ampersand here? Um, and then it's the same reason that I don't need like to dereference the pointer when I called it up there. The compiler just kind of knows. It knows that if I pass the name of a function, it knows that it can't pass functions themselves. That's just not allowed in C. So it knows that when I say comp int, I actually want to pass a pointer. Just like up there, when I called comp fun, it knows that I actually want to dereference the pointer to the function and call the function itself. So just a syntactic sim simplification. Just prevents us from having to throw in more ampersands and more stars. It says, all right, I know what you want, and I'll, I'll just do it. What else? There's something we're in the middle? Question? Yeah. Uh, in the signature for find max, why does there, uh, when you have, when you write down the part for the compare function, uh -huh. why do you not have to include parameter names? Where, where the constant void stars are. Uh, because, so the question is, why don't we have to include parameter names? Because uh, it's just because this whole thing is just about uh, the type of function. Um, you're allowed to name the parameters whatever you want. So like we can't restrict that. Um, so all we're saying is the function takes two void stars and returns an int. Notice that when we call the function, we pass the actual arguments. We don't. We're not. You know. So so it's not that we actually get. If I put you know, VA in here or something. It's not that I actually get to refer to that as if it were a parameter. Um, so yeah, it's just think of it as a type. Just think of it as the, the sort of the name of a type. A function which takes two void stars and returns an int is a type. What else? OK. Let's see another example. Let's look at an example with strings. I'll, I'll uncomment it. Oh, I see my mouse. Oh, oh, I see. Haha. <laughs> Forgot that. Vim scrolls past the end. OK, so I've got, I want to uncomment this test strings function. I had to comment out the call to find max because before it didn't work. Before it was only on integers. So, so that was my motivation for writing to find max. So here I've got an array of strings. And I want to find the max over these strings. Um, and where here I'm defining the max in terms of alphabetical order. So let's update this code. I'll get rid of the comment because I don't like having two do's in my code when I'm OK. And so we can update find max. The, the two parameters are, are as you'd expect from before, size of, stirs of 0. And then we'll call compster as our way of comparing two strings. But now the question here, which is very much related to the question over here, is what type does find max return? All right. A little slide to summarize this. All generic functions cannot operate on the elements themselves. I've been saying this repeatedly. They have to operate on pointers to elements. This means that find max returns a pointer to element. This means that the comparison function takes a pointer to an element. This first line is what we saw before. My elements, the elements in my nums array were ints. Therefore, find max returned an int star. And the comparison functions cast the two pointers it got as int stars. Here are a couple other examples. But the one that's important is this one. If I have an array of care stars, which is what I have with stirs, right? I have an array of care stars. Then find max is going to return a care double star, a pointer to a care star. So find max returns a care double star, and then the comparison function takes a care double star which is why we need to dereference the care double star before I can call stir comp. So here, I need to cast the return value of find max to care double star, and then dereference it, just like we did with the int case, to get the care star back out, which I can now print. Questions?
Let's run it just to make sure that I didn't do anything silly. Oops, yeah. The max is pair, which is correct, alphabetically, alphabetically last. Questions about that change? Very important to understand why this is a Caradouble star. The array had care stars in it, so a pointer to one of those care stars is a care double star. And that's what find max returns. Everybody okay with this? Okay. Let me save just so that I can make sure I have this to show you later. And we'll go back to the slides. All right, so where are we? We've gone through one major example for the day, and I've highlighted in blue the things that we've gotten through that we got to see. We saw that we cannot do pointer arithmetic on a void star, and we saw a workaround for that, which was that we could cast void stars to care stars, and that allowed us to do arithmetic on the actual bytes. And then we saw how to implement the find max function, which let us look at passing and returning pointers to elements. And we got to see how to use a client supplied callback function. And so for the rest of the lecture, we're going to try to solve the other, the uh, remaining points. Okay? Feeling good? Any? Residual issues from the stuff? Okay. So let's go on to the next example. Again, this is going to be a code driven example. So I'll show you the code. I'll tell you what I'm trying to do. And then I will, and then as part of answering questions from the code, I will come back um, to the slides as needed. So here I will pull up swap.c. And I'll show you two examples of specific swap functions. So here I have a function to swap. Uh, so swap as in I've got, let's say I have two integers. Maybe I'll show you the, the calls so that you understand what we're trying to achieve. Let's go down here. So here you can see I, I have two integers, i and j. And what I want to happen is I can actually just run this and show you. What I want to happen is that before I had the value 107 and J had the value 12345, I would like that after I call swap, I has 12345, J has 107. And likewise, I would like to be able to do that with strings. So here I have the string Stanford University and the string computer science, and I'd like to be able to swap the two. So currently I'm using functions with specific types. I have swap int, um, which takes two pointers to integers. We, in, some, in, some, in other words, it takes two integers by reference, if you will, by passing them as pointers. And then it does the kind of usual swap through a, a temporary variable. Likewise, we have the, the swap string function, it takes to care stars by reference, we're changing the pointers. So we need to pass the pointers by reference. You saw this in lab with chop to back. So we take care double star, care double star, and we use exactly the same code to swap the two. Except with the change to temp. So now we'd like to implement the generic swap function, which I've called gswap. It takes, I've already had it set up to take two void stars, because I don't know what type they're pointing to. And I'm ta already taking the element size, I'm calling it just size for now, because I don't know that there are even arrays, so I'm not really thinking about single elements. Um, so I'm giving it, I've got two pointers to the things I want to swap, and I've got, and I know how many bytes I want to swap. So the two issues that we have to solve are, 
how exactly do we allocate memory for temp? In the examples before, I allocated temp as an int or as a care star. <coughs> so how exactly do I allocate memory for a thing, some generic thing? And then how do I actually do the copying? How do I do the swapping? This, this you know, a star a equals star b line. How do I do that? So I can answer both of those questions at the same time with a sequence of slides. So here we have an example of an int of an, of an, of an int star and a double star. I'm just going to stick, stick with them. And so here you can see what I've done here is instead of depicting an array of ints or an array of doubles, I, I'm just noting that IP points to at least one int. And then the rest of this memory, I don't know. You know, it kind of just goes off, off the end there. You know, to, to somebody else's memory. And likewise, this double points to this, this eight byte block and, and then who knows what's after it. Yeah? So when I say iVal equals star of IP, what happens? Well, I follow IP. I follow the arrow over here, and then I read some number of bytes to copy into here. How do I know how many bytes to copy into there? Well, I know that IP is pointing to integers. So I know that the int is actually that wide. So I'll copy these four blue highlighted bytes over in here. And I know that iVal has that, that amount of space because I've allocated iVal as an int. The same is true for the double. When I dereference DP, I know to read that many bytes because I know that DP is pointing to a double. So I copy those eight bytes and put them in here. Yeah? So now we have voice tar. Oh, but I didn't write void star. Wow, I've, this is a record for the number of errors on my slide. I'm sorry. That should say void star. Um, so did I ever fix it? No, I didn't. OK. OK, that should say void star. I will update these slides. I apologize again. Um, so here I've got, um, let's call that VP. It's pointing to this block of memory. I don't know where the division is because it's a void star. <coughs> and then, so now I've got the same two problems that I had with the swap function. If I say star VP, how do I know how much to copy from this region? And what exactly do I call this VVAL? What do I, what do I put in this blank? Well, it turns out we can solve part of that problem with a, with a size. So here I know, I guess I'm still calling it lm size, but here I know that I'm saying that the size is actually seven bytes. One, two, three, four. Did I actually write it right in? No, I didn't. Um, so if we know that the thing that VP is pointing to is seven bytes, then, you know, well, how did that help us? How can we use that information to answer both of these questions. How do, I, how do I copy and then how do I allocate? Right? Well, let's try something rather different. Instead of allocating VVAL as a single thing, I'm going to allocate it as an array. And we already saw the use of care to mean one byte things. And I can do the same thing here. I've got, if I allocate an array of characters with size, you know, a seven in this case, then I have exactly enough space to copy the value that VP is pointing to. All right, so that solves the first question. 
I can allocate the space um, to hold the, the temporary value by using an array of characters. But now I have to answer the other question, which is how do I dereference VP? Um, so up here, we had the solid black line to know where the, so that the compiler knew where to stop. Down here, we don't. So what do we do instead? Well, um, so I know that I do actually want to copy these seven bytes. But how do I tell that to the compiler? Like star VP still isn't going to do it. So we're going to have to do it sort of more manually. There's a function called memcopy. Its prototype is up here. It takes two void stars. It takes a source, a destination, or a destination source, and a size. And this function does exactly what its name suggests in a very, in exactly the manual way that you would come to, come to expect from C. If we pass it a size and we say copy from source to destination, so in this case, if we call memcopy of from VP, so we're passing two pointers, take note, we're passing the pointer VP and the array as a pointer VVAL. We're saying copy a lem size bytes from here over here, and that will fill in that array. Questions about this? Was there a return a void star or a character? Memco does mem copy? Yeah. Uh, mem copy returns if the, the return value of memcopy is actually irrelevant, memcopy always returns whatever you pass it as its first argument. So, like, if you already know the first argument, that doesn't matter. Um, so, uh, it's pretty common that we're just going to ignore what memcopy returns because it's always just this. Um, and it does return a void star. But, yeah. Question? Yep. I'm just confused that a variable name vp is dp. Sorry, yes. So, the, the, the variable name that I messed up, this is, should say void star vp. And it will. It should say that for the entire entire time. Um, uh, is character star intended to be used in this way? Um, like, was it designed like that by the developers of C, or is it kind of a hack? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the question is: Is character star really designed this way? Like, did did the developers go in thinking, yes, we can use character star this way? Yes, actually, um, care was set aside as the only type in C which we can guarantee its size to be one. And as a result, as part of that, the decision was, if we need to do point arithmetic in terms of bytes, if we need to allocate a certain number of bytes, we can use care for this purpose. Question? Yep. So if voice star were pointing to a double, how would, like, how would it make sense to write a double onto <laughs> characters? Yeah, so the question is, if, if VP happened to be pointing to a double, then, like, aren't you copying a double onto an array of characters, and what does that even mean? You're right that if we then went to take and print out this array of characters, we'd see gar as a string, we'd see garbage. But we're not using this array of characters as an array of characters. We're just trying to make some space to write eight bytes in the case of a double. And so we've got eight bytes here. We, or in this case, seven, but we, you know, we've got some number of bytes allocated here and some number of bytes that we want to copy here. They're just bytes. They're just ones and zeros behind the scenes, and we'll see all that later um, you know, next week. But you know, they're all just ones and zeros, and we just copy them over. And as long as we don't try to interpret them incorrectly, like as long as we don't try to print them out as characters, it'll, 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 it sure will copy them. And then when we go and copy them back out in the case of swap, then that'll work out. Okay. Um, so element size here is uh, absolute size. It's not like uh, if you had an array of doubles, you're not counting the number of doubles in the array. You're counting the actual. Uh, yes. So in this case, I'm not looking at this as if it were an array. I'm just thinking about a single D reference. So we can think of this as yeah, the size of a thing. Um, the size, of, for example, if the swap function, it's the si the number of bytes we want to swap. Um, yes. So it would be the number of bytes of a double. Um, or the number of bytes of an int, if we were swapping doubles or ints. Anything else? Um, oh, yeah. we're talking about um, heap allocation, right? Oh, sorry? We're talking about heap allocation, right? For? 
I mean, Which piece? with this, do we... Uh, so is the memory being allocated? No, that's on the stack. Yeah, so here I've allocated the memory on the stack. And that's why I need to use this care thing. An, an alternative would have been to write a, to use a heap allocation. We could have said, you know, void star vval equals malloc or something. But I don't want to use heap allocation when I don't have to. Um, we do, you know, the, we, the, the, the stack is really convenient. It, we got all those advantages we talked about last week. So if I could use the stack, I want to. And in this case, I can. I can just, you know, create an array on the stack. It's called care array, but we know what we're storing. Yep. <laughs> you needed to make the buffer so that like it blocked off that memory. Yeah. Like you couldn't have just done this with a pointer, right? Because it would just only point to the first value, and if you wrote over that, it just wouldn't be preserved, or what? So you're saying if I made this just like care star, or like void star vval, like here? Yes. Um. So if this were a pointer, then that wouldn't be that useful. Because I need to actually copy the, I want, my goal was to copy these bytes into, into this location. Um, so in the case of swap, my goal is to, right, so I needed a temporary variable to hold the, the, that one of the values so that I can do the swap with the other ones, right? I needed a, a temp. So if I made this a pointer, yeah, I could, I could make it point to the beginning, but then, yeah, I'm not actually allocating any new memory. So if I were to copy something over it, then I wouldn't, have the, I wouldn't, if I were to copy something over this cyan area, then I wouldn't have the cyan data anymore. So that's why we needed to make a, a big block of space to copy out all of these cyan bytes over so that now I can go overwrite these and I'll still have a copy. Yeah? Okay, so before, let's, let's go back to G swap, and we can answer these questions. And I'll try not to mess up more stuff. OK. So what did we say to do to allocate a temporary, to, to allocate temporary space to store one of those values, to allocate something like this temp? We can make temp an array of characters. And how many? Bytes do we need? We need size bytes to store one of these, to store one of the elements that we're swapping. And then how do I actually do the copying? I can use memcopy. And so every time, every one of these equal sign operators up here is going to be a separate memcopy line. So instead of dereferencing the void star, because I can't dereference void stars, because I don't know how many bytes to copy, I'm going to ask memcopy to do it for me. I'm going to say copy into temp from a size. I'm going to memcopy into a from b size. So right here's where if I made the if I made temp a pointer, then this line copying b copying the stuff that b points to over the stuff that a points to, then I would have lost the stuff that a was pointing to. Right, so that's why I needed to make that space. And then the last mem copy of B in the temp size. Questions? Questions about this? Yep. Should we free temp as well? Oh, so the question is, should we free temp? Well, temp is allocated on the stack, so we're all good. That's why we don't like to use malloc, because then we got to go free it. Question? Yep? Does this work on strings as well? Or, uh, or... <laughs> so you're asking, does this work on, like, if I were to swap care stars? Yes. Yes, and we will see that in a moment. Okay. <laughs> But that's, that's, a good, that's a good question. It's like, well, okay, you know, we've, we've generalized this function. Like, are we sure that this is going to work on, on every type? And yes, absolutely. We, we want to get there. Um, we want to make sure that we, we understand how this works on every type. Okay? Anything else? Okay. So let us update our calls to, so down here I have swap int. I've, I was directly calling swap int and swap stir. I would like to update these calls to use gswap. So here's my integer, i and j. 
So instead of calling swap int, I can call gswap. It's actually, the prototype's pretty simple, right? It's the same as it was, you know, I still pass in pointer to the first thing, a pointer to the second thing. And now I just have to pass this additional parameter, size of, oops, I'm off by a lot. Hang on. Size of, uh, I guess I could say size of int, that's fine. So this should work. Okay, so that part worked, right? So the int part, that's the only one I've changed so far. The swap continued to work. Yeah? Now I want to do swap strings. This is exactly the question that you had here, right? How, can we do this on strings? And here, so uh, just I guess a quick recapper. Now we're going to go on to, we're, we're finishing up this part about uh, uh, implementing these generic functions, and now we're going to look at what can go wrong when we call, when we try to do this gswap thing. I hope I have no more errors on my, on my slide. Okay. Yes, everything seems consistent. Everybody check for me. Okay. So here I've allocated two strings, S1 and S2. I stir duped them. Uh, don't worry about I stir duped them. It's just going to be an easier, it's going to be easier to work with. Oh, I messed that up now. Dang it. This is what I get for updating slides at 2 in the morning. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, anyway, these are the actual strings. The actual strings are Stanford University and computer science. <sighs> All right. So, so don't worry about the lines, but I did stir dupe them. I will free them at the end. And my question is, here are two different calls to, uh, to gswap. And my question is, which one of them is correct? I assure you that one of them is correct. And for the one that's wrong, what does it do? So take a minute with the person next to you or something and work it out. Which one of these is correct? And for the one that isn't right, what does it do? Let's take another few seconds. Hang on. Okay. All right. Uh, Sorry. Okay. Let's get, uh, all right. Thanks everybody. One second. I 
can't even handle how bad that error is on that slide, so I'm just going to update it. Now here's the fun part. Will it actually just auto update? Nope. Okay. Got to gotta reload. Ah, all right. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. Okay. Where are we here? Dereferencing stuff. We good now? Did I do it? Okay. 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 All right. So here we go. We've got the we've got our two calls to swap. Hopefully I fixed it. If I haven't, then at least it's a little bit closer. <laughs> um, so rather than um, as, so hopefully you all noted down your predictions and, and what's going to happen. I'll walk through both of them because they're both pretty important. So let's start with number one. So we've got, we're going to swap ampersand s1, ampersand s2, an amount equal to size of care star. So here we look inside. So what is this going to do? Well, I'm not going to walk through the full mechanics of how gswap works, but I am going to, I'm just, so I'm just going to kind of assume it works and, and sort of tell you where it's, what it's, what is kind of happening at a high level. And then hopefully you can trace through the mechanics of, of what it's actually doing. And if you have questions about that, then you should bring them up with me. But so we're passing the address of S1, the address of S2. So we're passing the 9,000 and the 9,008. So what happens is we swap the things in these two boxes. How big are each, how much do we swap? We swap size of care star. So we look inside this box. There's a care star in this giant box here. There's a care star in this box here. We swap them. <coughs> so that works. Yeah? Oh. Um, yep. So the size of car star is eight. Yes. Um, but the size of uh, things in the boxes, is that also eight or is it four? Uh, the size of the thing in the box, assume that the box holds eight things and maybe I don't have to write out the whole address, but it's okay. there's probably eight things in here somewhere. Yeah, so sorry, it's it's double the size, right? It's like it's um it's it's down. So it's four on this line, four on that line, if you want to think about it that way. Okay? So this works. Now here's the interesting question. If I say, what if I said so so the first one is correct. This line does in fact do the swap that I expect. And here's this but what about this one? What if I do swap, what if I ask to swap S1 and S2 with size of care star? Now I'm passing the 2000 and the 2050. So I'll follow this pointer. I'll follow this pointer and I'll swap these two. So before you follow the pointers, yes. um, a couple people thought like that'll just give an error because you're oh. Sure. Passing a different type of thing than ah, yes. Passing. That's great. So it's like, what is, so the, the thing is, um, who's watching us, who's, who's checking our types, right? So gswap takes two void stars, meaning it can take pointers to anything. It can take pointers to integers. It can take pointers to characters. It can take pointers to care stars. It can take, you know, as many stars as you possibly want to pass it. And they're all just going to look the same to the compiler. So if you accepted that this didn't work and you think, oh, well, it doesn't work, but, you know, maybe there's going to be some check because size of care star isn't in line with the types that I passed it here, right? The realm of compiler checking is, is gone. Um, this code will compile. It will compile with no warnings and it will compile with no errors and it will just do something. And rather than, I have it in the slide, but rather than do that, I will show you. I'd rather actually show it to you. Oops, do this. Oops, do this. And then I want this slide back as well. So we'll come back here. So here I'll call gswap. So hopefully you believe me that the first one works. I won't do it. Oops. But if I do s1, s2, size of care star, 
right? So now I'll make swap, and there you have it. So you swapped the first. So why eight? Why eight? Because size of care star is eight. So what does it do? It says, okay, follow the pointers. Here, let me let me slide this up. Follow the pointers of S1 and S2. Go there and swap the eight bytes here and the eight bytes here. Well, characters are one byte each. So we've now swapped the two. Again, no warnings, no errors, no, hey, by the way, maybe that wasn't such a great idea, no incompatible pointers. We have to be very vigilant about working with void stars. The same chart applies here. If I have an array, or if I have, if my element, the, the things that I wanted to swap were care stars. So the things that I need to pass to gswap are care double stars. And if I pass care stars, then I'm asking it to actually swap the characters. Um, but now, if I switch it over and I pass the care double stars, then that does work. Any questions about this? Yep. What happens if you try um, G swap, but like you use a large? <coughs> yeah. Like yeah. So do you want to do it with ampersand or no ampersand? Um, no ampersand. Okay. You want to do no ampersand? I'm glad you asked, because I was I was just going to get there. Do no ampersand, and how much do you want to pass? Pick a number. Hmm? Sure, okay. So what happens if we swap, you know, some big number of bytes here? I don't know, maybe I swap like sterlen of S1, right? I'll just do that, right? Uh sure, plus one like that. Or yeah, okay. Let me see. Which one's which one's longer? Okay, I'll do sterlen of S2 or something. So basically it's gonna do exactly what you what we tell it to do. We've got point, so we're gonna swap characters because we passed care stars. And it's just gonna swap that many characters. Still no warnings. And you know, now we just do get this weird thing. And you can see how we actually just like lost a few characters in some weird way, anyway. Now here's the fun one. Now maybe you think, oh, well actually I don't wanna swap the pointers, I wanna swap the characters themselves. So I'll use sterlen of S1 maybe, but then you get th this one wrong and you decide to go ampersand. All right, all right, yeah, you know, I, you know, so Michael said, watch out, pointers to element, that means put ampersands everywhere. Here we go. <laughs> What's really interesting is it almost works. But then we seg fault. So, Big takeaway from all of this discussion. It's very important that we watch our types. It's very important that we pay attention to the level of indirection. When I use the phrase level of indirection, I'm talking about do I put an ampersand, do I not? Am I passing a care star? Am I passing a care double star? What am I passing and what am I passing a pointer to? It's very important that we pay very close attention to this because the compiler cannot and will not do so. So every time you're thinking, should I put an ampersand, should I not? Should I pass size of care star, should I pass sterlen? Stop, take a moment, and say, what level of indirection am I at? Maybe I should draw a picture, and then you'll be good to go for the rest of the quarter. All right, so next week we'll come back and do something completely different. Hey, hey. Uh, thanks for the lecture. Yeah. Uh